This evening I wanted to um, just take a phrase out of uh, the first chapter of Timothy in verses uh, 118 where he says, This charge I commend unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. Now I had never uh, really been sure exactly what he meant when he said that, and so I chose to look into it a little further, look at some of the commentaries, and... uh, um, I wasn't sure if he was talking about a, a specific prophecy which Paul might have been given concerning Timothy or if Tim and Th- Timothy, because he was uh, at such a young age, someone so bright that he was, uh, there were certain things that were expected of him, you know, that, that he, he, was, he was going to be a, a great, you know, preacher or someone in good, great in the kingdom. But um, when, I, so when I heard that phrase, it made me think about us in Christ Jesus, how there are, there are some uh, prophecies, so to speak, which, which went before about us and as, as, as the sons of God, you know. So I want to take a moment and think about what God revealed concerning who we were going to be in Christ Jesus, you know, what he was going to do. There are some prophecies that went before concerning us. Now, in the religious environment in which we're living, I've, I we hear so many times people ask, "Well, how is this relevant to today?" You know, there's a there's a whole movement of people. Well, we're just going to make we're going to make church as usual relevant for our current generation. You know, now, whenever we think about the things that the prophet said, uh, these things are relevant because of the fact that God has not changed. God is who He was when He revealed those things to the men, and and His His plan is not always being updated. He's working according to the plan that He set down before the foundation of the world. And so, if if we know that God is operating according to His will and salvation, it, it behooves us to know what what His will is and what what has He said about these things, you know. Especially in in examining your own self to see whether you be in the faith, you know what has God said that that He was going to do in His people. And I wanted to fasten on this text in uh, the thirty sixth chapter of Ezekiel as our our example of this. When He says, "For I will take you out from among the heathen, and I will gather you out of all your countries, and will bring you into your own land, and then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart from out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. You will. And you shall dwell in the land I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I also will save you from all of your uncleannesses, and I will call for the corn, and I will increase it. So as we open our meeting this evening, uh, in seeing this, the, the revelation of God concerning the, the manner uh, in which he is going to work in humanity, uh, the, these are areas in which the wicked one, if we have, he has the opportunity to, he can confuse us and take us with guile. But, but if we know the, uh, the manner of the working of the kingdom, then we can see these things rightly. So firstly, he says, I will take you from among the heathen. So the very first thing that he tells us he intends to do, he's drawn a line between himself and the world. He said, there is a difference in between me and some people. And, the, and, and in, in the kingdom, in being brought into Christ Jesus, the, the apostle expounds on this further. It says, when, when you were put in Christ, you really were separated from the world. A very clear dividing line has been drawn here. Uh, this is the reason why um, the and, and John in First John he's able to make these affirmations that are so clear and concise that he's able to to see things just in black and white you know holy and unholy righteous and unrighteous and, and to the degree that you're sensitive to the will of God you will, you'll be able to see things this way too uh, any kind of teaching or any kind of uh, influence that. Uh, uh, seeks to make a gray area, kind of blur this sharp contrast to something that you want to stay away from. Amen. So then he says, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all of your idols. So then God said, he makes this clear, that I, I will not accept anything other than undivided attention. 
Uh, now, when I say this, I realize this is a, a highly personal subject. It, every one of us has to work this out on, on an own individual level, but anything that takes your mind and your heart and your soul and your strength and take, puts it anywhere except for God, that's like an idol, so to speak. But he, he said, I will clean you from all of your idols. This is what I'm going to do. So, so if, if you see that there's something that's bleeding off your, your attention in that area, that you're not conforming to this, this, what God said he was going to do. There's power to do this. This is life in Christ Jesus. This is what faith is designed to work in you. So I exhort you uh, this, this evening to be, be more sensitive to this kind of thing. Uh, uh, I was reminded as I was thinking about this of that sermon that, or the series that Brother Michael did a few years ago. It said, you can love God more. Uh, that's, in this sense, your, your affection isn't like a, um, a fixed capacity. It's, it, it can grow. Yeah, you're, you can have more desire for the things of God. You, you can have a more of a desire to please Him than you do presently. This is something that you grow and increase in. And I will put my spirit in you and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. Now, on, on Wednesday night, uh, when we've been lifting up our prayers, I've, I've been more aware lately that it's important to pray for the right things. And if it's true that we have this confidence that if we pray for things that are according to his will, that we know that we receive the positions that we desire of him, it's good that we know what his will is. This is a good, a good thing. So he, he wants his people to be more like Christ. God, God has revealed that he wants to be shown in his people. Now this is something that we can, we can pray according to this. So he's, he's making many sons. He's making, bringing many sons to glory. So as, as you war, as you fight the good fight of faith, you can have this confidence in moving forward to this. And when you ask for these things, that we know that it's the will of God that his people overcome. So, so in this, you can, have that, you can have this confidence in asking for these things because you know this is what God wants to do. So, so and this, this is the last one, and I, I really enjoyed this. And I, I, I've, I've read this text many times, but I never really fasted upon this aspect of it, but it's good. And I will call for the corn and increase it. That just sounds good, doesn't it? See, God's revealed that he is abundant in his provision. He is. See, he's, he's shown us that he doesn't give meager, you know, portions. He really doesn't. What he's, been, what he's given you in Christ Jesus, it is big. It really is. But not only that, when you, as you apprehend it, as you walk in it, it grows and increases. You know, he gives you the corn. He gives you what you need. But as you, as you partake of that, as you use the strength that's given you from that, you increase. So my exhortation for you this, meeting, this, this evening as we go into this meeting is don't level out your expectations. You know, when you come to the assembly, always expect to receive, always. And look forward to getting something better than what you expected. Because we're talking about the God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask or think. So don't just expect to come and get a handful. So, and when, when you look into the Word, don't be satisfied leaving it without receiving something. You know, you be like Jacob. Wrestle all night for the blessing. Don't be content to, to leave until you get something from it. Now, we can see the, the design of God and salvation. Now, we, we will be able to fight a good warfare. It, it is, it, it's definitely very um, advantageous to us to be able to, to look into these things and see what God, he's, he's articulated what he's going to do. So just as it concerns the prophecy we talked about, in light of the things we've been made privy to in the day of salvation as well, we know that we've been called out to be separate. We know this. We know we've been cleansed and, and we've been made acceptable in the beloved and we, we've been given a provision to remain in that state. And, and, and we, we've been uh, given a provision to increase in our sanctity, to, to, to be more, made more separate. And, and, and we've been given a taste of the abundance to come with, with the confidence that this is what we're going to have, this is what we're going to have in, in the times to come. And we might be able to overtain any, overcome anything else to be able to obtain that. So as, as we go into the meeting tonight, let's just be more aware of these things. So. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord.